Hi, I'm Samantha of Goddess Awakening. I'm here to hold a safe space and share with you the true and authentic stories of how we got here. Empowering women, elevating for all. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Goddess Awakening. I am back in the U.S. and it is March 19th already. Crazy. Today, I have here with me a guest that you guys have um, heard on here before, Brian, and that would be boyfriend Brian, so not to be confused. Hello, Brian. Hello. We just got back from Germany. Oh, man, what a trip, right? Yeah, about a, about a week ago now, I've been home. Yeah, it's, well, a little bit, yeah, right about a week, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay, perfect. So um, we're going to talk about Germany today. That's That's the episode. Today is all about, well... We also went to Amsterdam, so the Netherlands is included. Um, there may have been an accidental trip to a third country, but we'll get into that later. Yeah. Um, so just a little backstory. Um, I have been told, well, I actually know that some of my family definitely um, is from Germany. My great grandmother, um, they came from Germany and I have always just wanted to learn more about the culture and where my family came from. And at the time I drank a lot of beer. So that was definitely something that interests me as well. Um, But yeah, Germany um, has been my like number one bucket list item since I can remember. Um, Just yesterday, actually on my Facebook memories, it was, that was too funny. 10 years ago that I posted 10 or 11, but yeah, a long time ago. I posted that I was nonchalantly looking up flights to Germany. And here we are 10, 11 years later, and I finally have been to Germany. And then you are also familiar with Germany as well. Yeah, it was pretty funny because I think, I don't know if it was our first date, but very early on in our relationship, you had mentioned about how Germany was so like high up, if probably number one on your bucket list for vacations or travel plans. You know, I lived there for 14 years, went over there with the army for eight and then stayed working as a civilian for six more years. So it was 14 years total. Um, and I'm fluent in German. So, I mean, when you said that, and I was like, well, we definitely need to make that happen. If there's anybody that you should go with, it would definitely be me because uh, I can show you around every every nook and cranny of that country. And you don't have to worry about that language barrier. Yes, that is true. So. We talked about that, and then I love to plan everything because that's who I am. I'm the planner, including trips. I love planning trips, um, and we do lots of music festivals for those of you who haven't caught that theme. Correct. Um, and 99% of the time, we are working those festivals. So, yes, they are fun, and also they are work. Um, so this one was pure vacation. Um, and I was looking at flights as I do. Thank you. Shout out Google, because that's how I find all my good flight prices. Um, and I was like, holy crap, this flight was like $560 round trip yeah, from OKC to Munich. It's not like we had to drive to Dallas or something crazy. It literally was like 560 round trip. And it was, uh, you know, the end of February. So it's like, well, there's not a whole lot going on in February for festival season and events and, you know, taking off work isn't that hard for either of us. Um, So pretty much we ran it. We we got the flights, we got the trip insurance and all in. uh, It was about 1500 bucks for both of us, um, seats and all the things included. And that was back in... November. Yeah, because that was when you sold your house, Mm -hmm. when that happened. Yeah, I mean, all in two people, $1,500 round trip, transatlantic. That's unheard of at these times. You know, the only thing I had had said to you when we first looked at them was that sometimes February, early March can still be a little crappy with the weather over there. But, you know, I guess having been gone for 14 years, weather patterns over there have shifted because Renee said, oh, yeah, March is fine now in Germany. So that was good to know. So, I think we kind of found our our niche time of the year to definitely go over there. You know, it's yeah. super cheap. Yeah, it was. So we got the flights in November. Um, and then the rest, we were like, we'll figure it out. Because yep. um, like you said, you you know where to go. You're familiar. You speak the language. And I've done crazier things by myself. So if I can do it with someone who is going to be my little tour guide, I'm down. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm always open for any reason to go over to Europe. I love it. 
So I've never been. This was my very first time, as we were saying, which was really exciting. So I'm 32. So I finally got to go to Germany. And then this is your first time back in 14 years, yep. almost to the day, like you were saying, yeah, too. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so you were there for 14 years and had been almost exactly 14 years since you moved back to yep. the U.S. Um, so all, all the timing was really interesting. Yeah, it was very interesting how it all worked out that way. So this year is also a leap year. So uh, we actually got the extra day this year we got to spend in Germany. So that also worked out in our favor. Um, mm -hmm. So we were at February 29th. We were in Germany. Um, we flew in the 27th and then we lose seven hours uh, once we get to Germany from Oklahoma City. So we fast forward in time, seven hours. Yeah, landing at, uh, on the 28th. Yeah, so we, we got to Germany on the 28th. Technically, Germany time is like 11 a.m. that we like got yep. to the hotel pretty much, which would be then like four in the morning. Oklahoma yeah, City time. Four in the morning. So we're we're we are like starting our day at four in the morning. You know, we did our best to sleep on the flight. I will say we got super lucky because there was like maybe fifty percent or less capacity yeah. on the plane. Um, so we each got a whole three person row to ourselves. Um, so we could lay out. We could get as comfortable as you can get on a plane. Um, and yeah, so that was thankfully a good experience. We did get delayed in Chicago. Um, about oh, three yeah, hours. About um, yes, we did forget about that. So that's also a good thing. Um, but there was a tornado um, in Chicago while we were literally on the runway getting ready to take off in our plane. And not and like far away in Chicago. No, like yeah. it was eight, I think eight miles or something. Yeah, it was right? not far at all. Very close. Um, so they obviously told all the planes to like, hold on a second. Um, so there was just like probably a row of like 30, 40 planes on the runway, like chilling which is kind of scary like yeah. i don't love that but everything was totally fine um but we did have to wait and we waited on the plane so instead of being on the plane for you know eight and a half hours it was closer to probably almost 11 12 um but we got there um just a little bit later than expected so no big deal um we got to germany we got our bags and we got a rental car and then it's like okay here we go um, and then we headed to our first hotel, which was in, um, technically Munich. It's but like a suburb of Munich. It's way on the outside because in Germany, most of the airports are kept on the outskirts of the cities because of noise ordinances, stuff like that. So I didn't know how we were going to feel, uh, that long in the air and on the plane and jet lag and all that stuff. So that's why I said, let's get a hotel very close to the airport, just in case we really just needed to crash, crash, yeah. which I don't feel like we needed to crash right away, but we went out and explored a little bit yeah. and, you know, I think it was good it the easy. way it worked. Yeah, definitely. It was literally like 10 minutes from the airport, tiny town. There's like three restaurants. Um, oh, I should have written down the hotel names, but it's okay. Well, I'm going to do like some kind of like written out thing with this so you guys can check out um, maybe like a travel blog situation. But anyway. I could uh, pull it up too on, I probably still have it all right yeah. here. Well, we got there and checked in. Really cute, nice hotel, like little older building. Um, breakfast was included, so that was really nice. And then um, the hardest part was figuring out how to get out of the parking garage. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about um, that part, too. So getting in was like an automatic sensor where the garage would just open, and then the out was like we couldn't figure out what the sensor was. Um, so Brian had to go ask reception. They're like, yeah, you got to pull the chain. And there's literally a chain that you had to pull for the garage door to open. It was the weirdest thing. And I'm like, why would we just know to pull a chain to get out of a garage? Having been in probably 20 something countries and lived in foreign country for 14 years, I had literally never seen anything like that. You know, and what's funny is if you remember when we pulled in, you said, that's weird, like, because we hit the chain. Like, why is that there? And then, like, when we went to leave, I went up to reception. Like, oh, you're dumb. Just pull the chain. Yeah, it's like, who the hell knows know to pull that. the chain? Um, also, another thing from that um, hotel that I saw for the first time while we're there um, is they actually had marked parking spots for women. And I was like, what is that? Because um, I'd never seen that before. And Brian was telling me that it's for women who are, you know, traveling alone and they get the close up parking spots. So yeah. kind of like handicap, but they have spots for women specifically. Yeah, it's handicap. It'll it'll be generally handicap and then the Frauen Park plots, which is what they call it, the women's parking spot. Um, it'll be more usually well lit. 
It'll be closer to the entrance to whatever building you're going into and stuff like that. Just so that way, if a woman is by herself, she has less distance to be potentially, you know, apprehended or anything like that. So so that was pretty cool. And then um, while we were there, we obviously were hungry. So we were like trying to find a place to eat like desperately. There was nothing super close and, unless you wanted to basically go back into the airport, which the airport's really, really nice. But we'll talk more about that later. Um, so we finally found one and then we looked it up and it was like next to our hotel. We didn't have to drive. We didn't have to even like, there was no point to drive because it was easier to just walk there. Well, we drove to, to the airport because remember we had to get the, uh, Oh yeah. We forgot our travel adapters. Yeah. So we went back to the airport and we figured we'd find something on the way or at the airport and nothing, there was nothing we saw on the way and there was nothing that looked good in the airport. And then you looked up on the Google again Mm -hmm. And did Google Maps, and by the time we got there, like you said, it ended up literally almost touching our hotel when yeah. we came back. So that was really cool. Yeah, and it was a very um, German restaurant, even though it was not owned by Germans. But it was cool. It was really good food, um, and they had actually a really good selection of non-alcoholic options. Um, yeah. They had beers and they had mocktails, and um, Brian and I are still not drinking, and a bunch of people, including myself, were like, are we going to drink in Germany? Um, yeah, because we, you and I talked about it. Like, yeah. are we going to have a couple or whatever? Yeah. And- so we definitely went back and forth with that, and then it was like, I don't, I'm so close to a year now that I don't want to s- just stop. Um, so we did. We stayed um, alcohol-free even while in Germany, which was like my true test, Um because there's just beer in your face, like pretty much everywhere. everywhere you go. And it's cheaper to drink beer than it is to order a water, which was crazy to me. Like water in the U.S. is free. You can just have free tap water yeah. pretty much any w- restaurant you go to. And then it was like you try to order water and they said, do you want what did he say? You want with or without gas? Mm-hmm. And luckily I had listened to some podcasts prior, so I knew what the hell he was talking about sparkling water or still water um so those are your options and they're again basically the same price as a beer well i mean especially to like where we touched down in munich you know the capital of bavaria a typical old school bavarian breakfast is what's called a, a vice verse so it's a white sausage a pretzel with mustard and a hefeweizen basically a german beer And that's a typical breakfast. You get all your calorie intake and everything. The farmers and all that would go out and work fields for the day till lunch. And so, I mean, beer is like a staple of all German foods. And I was really proud that we didn't give in. Like you said, it'll be it'll be a great thing to be able to say that we made it to a year. So plus, like I said, the the Erdinger alcohol free that I had that first night there, that that was great. Yeah, that that place is actually where I had that. um, Well, you had. I had the grapefruit and you had the lemon, I think. Mm. And it was like basically like a Rattler. And it was so good. Like I would drink that all the time if I could. The way I explained it to you was that for me, it's, and you mentioned it on one of your Facebook posts, you wouldn't know the difference. The only place to me you could slightly notice the difference was the aftertaste was cleaner. It wasn't kind of that filmy, like a real beer aftertaste that leaves in your mouth. It was just like clean. It was, Mm. it was really good. So that was fun. They had really good food. We ordered everything we wanted, basically. Um, And then we woke up and we headed to, we went to Würzburg first? We went to Schweinfurt first, where I was stationed at, remember? The old barracks where I was in the army at, which is no longer army barracks anymore. It's now half being used as refugee housing. And then um, the other half is being renovated to be like office space, which is kind of crazy because, you know, we took pictures. They still have the the archway with the name of the barracks and everything, but half of it's gone and it's being used in a different way. So it was, it was really weird, you know, especially after leaving for 14 years, it was still an army base completely being used when I left. And now here we are, it's all gone. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Then we went on to Würzburg. Well, we actually hit up that wildlife park, too. That was cool. Oh, yeah. In Schweinfurt. There yes. Is. They had a whole free wildlife park with um, a few different animals that are, like, 
you know, they live in the area that they've rescued and they had lots of cool little parks and things for kids to play on. Um, they had a petting zoo. So of course you had to go to the petting zoo. Yep. Um, I love petting zoos. They're like one of my favorite Can things confirm. in life. She does. So we, we got to pet some goats and some sheep. I think that was all we got to pet. That was all there was to pet. Yeah. But there was like rabbits and guinea pigs and, but yeah, it was cool. Um, so from there, then we headed to the next town, which Wurzburg. was Würzburg. Mm-hmm. Würzburg for me is, I lived there less of amount of time than I did in Schweinfurt. Um, but for me, that's more of like where I would consider my roots um, for a couple of different reasons. I mean, when I was in Schweinfurt, obviously I was in the army. So I was deployed almost four years of the eight years I was there anyways. Würzburg was when I was out of the army and I got to do basically whatever I wanted to do. But that was also where, you know, my professional DJ career started was in the airport there, which is still open to this day. It's one of the longest running techno clubs in the in the world. So it was it was bittersweet seeing seeing that place. And it looked almost exactly like the day I left it on the outside. Um, and then a lot of my friends live in Würzburg area. So it was pretty cool seeing that again. This is just reminding me of all the pictures that we took on your phone that have been lost in your phone. So we got some pictures to share. Well, Miss Google over there said you were going to make a folder so I could put them in. Remember? Okay. We'll get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So, Würzburg, um, we hopped around town a little bit. They had a really big, um, cool, like, uh, open area with, like, shopping and, and food and things like that. Um, I remember we got like a coffee and I was just like mesmerized by all the like pastry places that just like tons of everyone selling pastries and, you know, yummy breads and different yummy things that you can eat. And it was just like almost overwhelming because there's so much food that I wanted to eat. Uh, But we had just had breakfast. So, you know, got chill. Um, Yeah, because like I told you, everything there, they can't they don't sell again the next day. So like all those little mini bakeries everywhere in those towns. What they have that day for sale is not for sale the next day. So everything is always tip top, perfect, fresh. And, you know, most preservatives that we're allowed to use here in America, they're not allowed to use there. So it's much cleaner and tastes so much better. I'm trying to think, where did we eat that day? We ate at that small Italian place for dinner that oh, night. Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, there are lots of Italian yeah. options if you're in Germany. Um, it's just like any other place. Like... You can eat anything, mm-hmm. even like in in America, you can have Mexican food, you can have Chinese food, you can have, I mean, German food is actually really hard to find around here. Um, we do have that one good spot in Wichita, but if if we were in like Pennsylvania or probably anywhere East Coast, it'd probably be a bit easier, but lots of Italian food options um, in Germany. Um, but that was when I really started to notice that like dogs can go everywhere in Germany. Like people had dogs in the restaurants sitting down with them, like all the stores, they were bringing their dogs inside. There's water bowls for dogs everywhere. Um, So that was really cool. Although I will say there was mostly small to medium dogs. There wasn't a whole lot of like giant breed dogs. Well, you got to think about it too, is is that housing is super expensive in Germany. So it there's a very small percentage of the population over there that actually own a whole house and have a backyard to themselves. So you'll either have one floor of a small house or you live in an apartment building. So, and the apartments over there are much smaller than they are here. So it's like, if anybody who's listening knows like kind of New York City size apartments, that's kind of what you're living with. So having a big dog would be very difficult in a lot of places over there. So, yeah. Well, so much for moving to Germany. Yeah, we, we'd make it work. Mm-hmm. So we did that. Um, we were there for... Well, I mean, we, we based out of there with a the hotel for two days. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But we then the second day went to Verdheim with Renee. Yes. So we went to a very small town, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a very small town. Um, where one of Brian's like longtime friends um, lives and we met up with him at his house and he does not, he speaks as much English as I speak German. So that's <laughs> basically nothing, yeah. um, which was a little bit of a 
like that was a culture shock for me a little bit, I think, because the only way we were communicating at the very beginning was, you know, via Brian translating for us. Which I tried to make sure I did a really good job and yes. of not letting anything go. I hope yeah, I hope I made that work for yeah, you. Yeah, you did. Okay. But it it was definitely like with my my anxiety that I just, you know, am working on daily. Um and not knowing like what's happening and like having to rely. It was, it was a whole thing. Um, but it was awesome. And then, um, he was like, you know, I'm going to go pick up my son and we're going to go to the town. And then, um, his wife came home who also only speaks German. And, um, we were list or translating through Brian again. And then that's when they were like, well, we'll all just or no, no, there was, there was a couple of different days. We went to breakfast first with just Renee. Oh, that's right. Because Liam was yes. at work or at work at school and Melly was at work. Yes. Okay. But Renee was working night shift, so he had the day off. That's right. So, so we, we went, went to, to the Baradon town, town in the castle. And we went up to this castle, which, you know, castle, totally normal, like castle in every town. Um, but we walked up to the castle. We went into this um really beautiful church. And I'm I'm not religious, but like I said, I want to see some of these old, beautiful churches. Yeah. Whether you're religious or not, just the architecture and the, the beauty of them is amazing. The amount of like detail. And then, yeah. So we'll post some pictures of that too, actually, because I think you have those as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really cool. We trekked it up to the castle and mm -hmm. that was a whole exercise going up a hill in a circle. Um, it really wasn't that long, but yeah. We're, you know, we got to, we got to exercise a little more. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do better we're gonna eat next lots time of pastries. <laughs> um, So yeah, then we got, we got breakfast and it was like, before we left, Brian's like, what do you want to see? What do you want to do? And I was like, honestly, I just want to go to Germany. Like I want to eat pretzels. I want to see, um, I think, I, yeah, the gingerbread houses. And you've been like, what, what are you talking about? Like, what is this gingerbread house you're referring to? And like when we got to that town, that was when I was like, this is what I'm talking about. This is like the old German Tudor style. Yeah, Tudor I believe is we what decided. we call it over here. But um, yeah. Like that just cliche, like old German towns in your mind. And, and what you see in pictures, it was that's when it was like, this is it. This is mm. this is what I've been looking for. Um, so that was really cool and very unexpected because obviously like that was just like an extra perk of our trip. Um, and then we got breakfast. Um, they eat a lot of like almost like charcuterie board style mm. breakfast yeah. is what I would describe it as. Um, so like breads and meats and cheeses. Um, they'll have like jams and butters. And that's very typical. It's, it's a little bit different than most people would think. Like they will eat a cold breakfast, kind of like cold breakfast is what they call it, and a cold dinner. Um, and then they eat a hot lunch. So like breakfast is like breakfast and then lunch they'll make whatever. And then. They'll eat something usually lighter, especially if there's somebody who works longer into the day. Um, they call it brotzeit. So it's like bread time. And so you'll just have the breads like you saw on the sandwich meats and charcuterie board style, the little gherkins mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But yeah, it's because they they know that you don't want to put a lot of heavy, starchy stuff yeah. into your stomach shortly before you're going totally to bed. Totally makes so, sense. Yep. So yeah, we got breakfast there. Um, it was really good. And then... Um, I learned about the little how Germans like to eat like boil or I guess not even boiled eggs, but like, yeah, boiled eggs with the little cups where you crack the eggs open. Yeah, yeah. those are really cute. I'm not really into eggs, but oh, I love eggs. Yeah. You know that. Brian was eating them at every meal, basically. Yeah, so. Um, so, yeah, from there, we went back to the house. We got to meet up with his um, wife and son um, and their son is seven years old. And I had never seen him before. I mean, this was I remember. When Renee posted him and Melly were expecting, and I was like, man, it was like I said, I left 14 years ago and he had Liam seven years ago. So mm -hmm. it was the first time meeting him. So that was another thing I just I just remembered, too, is when we were just hanging out with the three of us. And like, I, I think at one point you were like, are you good or something? Because we were driving separate from them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's Kyle. Like, it's my friend Kyle. That's right. Yeah, and you did say it was him. It, it literally like... Looking at pictures, it doesn't look like Kyle. It's very weird. But in person, like his mannerisms, the shoes he was wearing, just like the, his like goofy personality. And even though I, he wasn't speaking English, it's like communication is more than just words. Yeah. 
and uh, I'm trying not to cry right now, but it literally it was it was Kyle. Um, and if for you guys who don't know, Kyle's my friend who passed in November. Um, so yeah, that that was a whole a whole thing that was happening too. Um, for was, for me, it was hard too because like you know I had only met Kyle that one time. We did the show in Nashville together, and you know I. I knew that I wanted to get to know him more. So it's like when you kept telling me, because I think you told me like three times while we were hanging out with Renee about how, you know, it's, this is just like Kyle. I was like, it made me feel like at least I kind of knew him, you know, in a way. So. So there was that that was happening as well. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, we went, um, we went to their mall and um, we did some shopping and, um, there's a lot of the same stores and then a lot of different stores that we don't have. Um, certain things like like Nike is a lot more affordable for us, yeah. um, which is really interesting. Um, but then there was other things like the Puma shoes I got. They probably wouldn't have been as, as cheap at, as they were in Germany as they are here in the U.S. So there were certain things that were like trade-offs. Um, but they had a really cool um, pop-up shoe store that was yeah, there so we got awesome. to see that because brian's also a sneakerhead, mm -hmm. and Just i appreciate shoes as well um so they had some really really rare shoes that were like encased that you couldn't even like touch or get close yeah, to basically one of the i think it's 1300 pairs of the nike mags which is the um auto lacing nikes from the back to the future movie or back to the future 2 um, they originally only made, like I said, I think it's 1300 and they auctioned them all off and they all sold for like twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 a piece, um, to go to, uh, Michael J. Fox's foundation. So, um, it was pretty cool to see those in person. It's the first time I'd actually seen the original first ones in person. I've, they've done two other iterations of them afterwards, but this is the first time I saw those ones. So it was pretty cool. And yeah. don't forget the Powerpuff Girls. Oh yeah. Girls. They had the Powerpuff Girls too. All, all three of them. And luckily or not, I don't know, they didn't have either of our sizes because yeah. Brian probably would have dropped four or five hundred bucks on a pair of shoes. Um, but yeah, they didn't have our size. So yeah. we avoided that situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we did some shopping and then um Well, don't forget too, remember I was wearing I was wearing my my swing bag. And then all of a sudden, Liam, every time we would go oh, into a yeah. store, kept asking, Can I buy this? Can I buy this? to his parents, and they're like, No, no, no. So I I bought Liam the the yeah. sling sling bag, yeah. and then he wore it around the yeah, whole he day loved after. That. And then um, we went to a little chocolate store that was across the way. That um, they had literally every flavor, version, size, whatever you want of chocolate. They had it. It was wild. Um, and Liam kept coming up to me and like showing me, showing me, showing me, showing me stuff. And I was like, Yeah, cool. And of course, we don't know how to talk to each other. So mm -hmm. it was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they end up sneaking us mm -hmm. some gifts from there. So that was cool. Yeah. They gave us later. Um, but then we went back to their house and then he was like, we're going to get some donors. And we had donors for dinner. So that was my first. Yeah, that was my first one that week. Um, how do I describe a donor? It's like, it's kind of like Greek mixed with Italian almost. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. But it's, it's more, Turkish, right? Yeah, it's okay. Turkish. But the the food is like almost like pita bread, but then you have like lamb and some kind of beef. Yeah, it's the it's kind of I forgot what they call it, but it's kind of like the same type of stuff how they make a gyro, the meat that's from those how they, they layer it on that big skewer and then it rotates and it heat, you know, it heats it from the outside. It's cooked the same way. And, but I guess some of the seasoning and then the sauce that they use on it is oh, what yeah. sets it apart yeah. completely. And nobody does it. Like I haven't had one in America yet. That's yeah. been close. I've never heard of it until, but again, I bet if you we were like on the East coast, we could probably find it. Probably. Um, or even like, you know, San Francisco or something, but mm -hmm. Oklahoma around here. I've never even heard of it, but they were delicious. But um, Brian and Renee went to go grab the meals for us. Mm -hmm. And I stayed at the house with um, his wife and their son, who, again, don't speak any English. And her and I just kind of looked at each other. 
And we just like at the same time basically whipped out our phones and started using Google for Google Translate. Mm -hmm. Um, And we had like full on like in-depth conversations for like the 20 minutes you guys are probably less. You guys were gone picking up food. But it was like once again, my anxiety was like, oh, this is uncomfortable because it it, it is because you're like, what do I do? And then we figured it out. So. We just literally had like a pretty, you know, in-depth conversation. We talked about how we we met each other's partners and, you know, just all kinds of questions about where we're from. And it was really cool. Um, And then you guys got back and we had dinner. (coughs) And then Liam finally was like, I want to I want to use Google because he was scared the whole time to talk to me. I don't know why, but she said he's shy. Um, and then he was like nonstop asking me yeah. questions the rest of the yeah, night. He was, he was just like was asking so me about America. He's super into um, monster trucks. Monster trucks. Yep. And I was like, oh man, they were just in Oklahoma City last weekend. Yeah, right. um, so we were talking about just differences and different things that we have. And I was like, you know, what do you think of when you think of America? And they were like, French fries, hamburgers. I'm like, mm, yeah, mm, that adds up. Um, and then he wanted to show me his room. So he showed me his room and then he wanted to color. So he like opened up his giant box of like different modalities of, you know, art tools. And we just, we colored and then we, uh, we didn't talk the whole time. We, we asked a few questions. We talked about different colors. I learned that pink is in fact pink in German. So of course that's my favorite color. So I love that. Um, and then, yeah, we, we traded, photos and it was a really really cool sweet i don't know conversation again without words that i had with this seven-year-old so super cool and he said i'm his first american friend and he really wants to come visit us and his mom has told me multiple times that he's always asking about us um so i i hope that we made a a good impact 100 percent. you know their first his first experience with americans <laughs> It was like I said, I mean, me and Renee, it was almost as if like I hadn't left at all. You know what I mean? Like him and I were so close and everything. And it was, you know, I felt bad that we didn't have as much contact for the last 14 years, but it made me feel super happy that we just literally picked up exactly where it was and that you guys also hit it off. You know, because I mean, we all know nothing's worse than when your family or significant other of one of your close friends doesn't work well with your significant other. It makes it difficult, but I think we all really just meshed very, very well. So yeah, it was a good time. Yep. (sighs) So yeah, well, we're tearing up again, but it's okay. You know, it was a good, it was a really good experience. Um, and he was a really good kid too. So oh yeah, he was he was playing with rocks that he found, and he was sanding them down for me. He loves crystals. That's what we need to send him. We need to send him a really cool crystal wrap. Yeah, definitely. Piece. Something that's from around this area too, for sure. Yeah. We told him about crystal digging in Arkansas and he was like, Oh my gosh. So they want to come visit us in Oklahoma. That'll be interesting. Um and we'll make we'll make the best of it. Um but apparently they vacation in the South of South France. of France. Yeah. And they said they go camping, air quotes, and they showed me where they stay, and it's basically like these really nice beachfront cabins. Yeah. Um, so they road trip over there about 12 hours from where they live. And I was like, we fly into Madrid. No, they said it's two hours from Barcelona. Barcelona. Okay. So we could like, we could fly into Barcelona. There we go. So if anyone wants to do a vacation South of France, we're probably planning that for uh, next spring. Maybe we'll see. Um, but you know me always planning trips. Um, okay, so there's that trip. Super awesome time. Really cool to connect with people that, you know, you knew before me and before a lot of things. Um, so that was an awesome experience and just really kind, welcoming people. It never felt like uncomfortable or weird or whatever, except for my own stuff. But, you know, that's normal. <laughs> um, cool. So from there, we headed to our next stop. Yep. And that would be in Cologne. Um, Cologne is a huge city. Um, I think it's potentially third largest in Germany. Yeah, that third makes sense. Third or fourth. But it definitely gave me like New York City vibes. Um, also, I kept saying like 
Vegas vibes. So I got I got a lot of Vegas vibes too. Um, in which is one that areas. I can't relate to. Which yeah. is crazy. I've never been to Vegas, so yeah, it was like a way cooler, more authentic, legitimate Vegas, basically. And I love Vegas. I'm not talking crap. It was just better. Um, mm-hmm. But we were there on a weekday. No, that was Saturday. Okay, so we were there on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So we were there on a Saturday. Because remember, um, I was trying to DJ there yeah, that okay. night, and that just didn't work out. So yeah, so we went. We went walking the streets on Saturday. Um, it was pretty busy, but, you know, it's a big city. What what else do you expect? Um, tons and tons and tons of shops and places to go in. Street performers. Yeah, street and performers. Street artists. Tons of food. Like, just a lot going on. Um, super cool, big city. Um, we, I'm trying to not get confused. Um, so that's where we saw the the giant chalk artist um, in front of the giant cathedral and the cathedral was super dope it was like i think it was maybe not black but it was a darker color so it looked a little bit more like gothic super cool building Um, and then there was a bunch of um, chalk artists that were uh, making hearts of different countries so like the country's flag and he was taking the donations for, um, well, you basically would put your coin on whatever country you're from. Um, and it was just like a nice little message that he was writing. And it was like, doesn't matter what color, you know, you, your skin is or what country you're from or what language you speak. We're all um, a part of the human race, basically, was the gist yeah. of the message. Um, so that was really cool because he was finishing it up as we were walking past. So I got some good videos of of that. Um and at first we did not see the American flag, and I was like, "Hmm, what don't what are we what aren't we on there?" Um, well, the first one didn't have it. No, there wasn't, but there was multiple people doing it, right. so I think that was why. There's yeah, lots yeah. of countries, um, so that was really cool. And then what else in Cologne? We met up with my buddy Patrick, aka mm-hmm. Max Cherry. Um, Patrick and I, we were we didn't meet up till probably the last. It was only about the last two years I was in Germany, but we formed a pretty solid friendship as well. Um, It was based originally around the music, but then just also with similar tastes and stuff like that. Um, Him and I actually, our first, both of our first releases was our remix for Auntie Auntie that we did together in 2009. So we both started our quote unquote professional production careers together. So, and we DJ together a lot and you know, he was a resident at the time in at Boat's House in Cologne, which is one of the world's top 10 best clubs now, which is crazy to think that I was there when it first was starting. And it was like an old boathouse on the river, you know, and they turned it into this super club. So it was pretty cool. Um, but we had dinner with Patrick that night and it was a pretty long dinner. Yeah. We had more Italian food. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We went to the German restaurant and then I kind of got the vibe. It was like Logan's Roadhouse of Germany. You know what I'm saying? Like tourist kinda, German. Yeah, food. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the wait was like forever. And I was like, you know what? I'll just pick something different. And well, uh, the, the food other, was really good. Yeah, it was very good. And as far as you were saying, you were right because I was thinking about it afterwards. It was modeled after a Bavarian ski house, but. Cologne is not in Bavaria, Germany. So it was absolutely going to be a mm-hmm. tourist yeah. restaurant. So it, it felt it felt like that, the yeah. vibes. But yeah, we had some Italian food. Um, it was also really good. And um, we hung out with him for probably three hours or so at dinner. Yeah, uh, He did speak English. Yeah. So there was that. <laughs> that was a little bit different than the first, first meet up with the friends. Um, but also good to just hear a lot of you guys' stories and experiences and times together. Yeah, because we, like I said, we jam-packed that couple of years. We did a lot together. So, I mean, went to the Love Parade and just, yeah, DJ together. Did a lot of stuff together. So, yeah, it was good catching up with him, too. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that was Cologne. Lots of sightseeing and... We did a little bit of shopping. We got a few little knickknacky things. I did get some cologne from Cologne, um, so I have. Let's 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 shout that out. And make sure people put that together. What? Because like I told you, that's why the name Cologne is Cologne because of the the first Cologne company started there. 
Mm-hmm. And that's why it's called that. So if you got a bottle of that company, what was it? Fourteen ninety one or whatever. Fourteen, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Or fourteen forty one. I don't remember the number. Anyways, some numbers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it smells good. Um. So yeah, that was um cologne. That was uh, uh, also the first, but not the last time we had the issue with uh, offsite parking with the hotel. Oh yeah. See, I forget about these things. <laughs> Where did we stay that night? Uh, that was uh remember it was it ended up being about twenty five minutes away from Oh that's right, that's right. The center of That Cologne. was probably my least favorite hotel, I have to say. And it was there was nothing really wrong with it. No. Except for the parking. The parking was garbage. I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. It was the it they was so shared bad. the parking lot with the um the car fixing place, yeah. the car garage, and there was and no parking spots left when we got literally back. Literally none. We had to make our own parking spot that I helped you back into like a shrub. shrub yeah, literally Shrubs. a shrub to stay out of way. Anyway, yeah, it was a mess. Yeah. Um, I was low key stressed that we were going to get towed because we were probably not supposed to be there, but there was literally nowhere to par- ever else to park. So, um, and then there was a police officer that was kind of like circling the area, but he didn't seem like he gave a shit about what we were doing. Yeah. Um, so that was good and bad, um, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, uh, we were only there for one night, yeah. so it was fine. <laughs> um, but the breakfast was really good, I will say. They had a very good breakfast. Yeah, they did. Really yummy breakfast. They also really like lox, um, which I love lox. And they had this like... Um, I had a couple of times while we were in Germany, but the like Worcestershire like cream... Sauce. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it because I don't it's really like a know. Spread. It's not. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but it was delicious. Um, so yeah, that's what we did in Cologne. We did a lot of walking. We did catch some Pokemon. Yeah, we did. Uh, Moulin Rouge was set up there, so I took some photos of that. That was super cool. Mm-hmm. I got to see like a legit train station, which was nuts. I literally felt like you were inside an airport, mm-hmm. and it was a train station, like wild. Yeah, Cologne Cologne train station is pretty big. I mean, like you could kind of think like for anybody who's out there listening, like Grand Central or Paddington Station in London, stuff like that. It's like you've got multiple platforms on multiple levels. It's a, it's a pretty big train station there. So, yeah, that was pretty neato. And then we headed to the next stop. Okay, make sure I don't miss anything. <laughs> um, so then we went to Amsterdam in the Netherlands, um, which is also... Holland. Holland. Yep. It was a whole thing. I was so <laughs> mind-fucked. I was like... Why are all those like those like cliche clogs that you think of when you think of Holland um, and something else? They were oh the tulips. tulips. They were literally everywhere, and I was like, "What's going on? We're not in Holland!" Like, and they finally had to like Google it and like, yeah, "What's going on?" Yeah, I told you, here? I wasn't. I remembered it was something weird about it back in the day, but like I said, I'd only been there twice yes. and early on, so I didn't. Basically, know. it's like a region of the Netherlands is Holland, but they're most well known for Holland. And then, then you have Amsterdam, which is where we were, which is, of course, where people think of the marijuana coffee shops, which, of course, that is a reason that I wanted to go there. Duh. Um, but that is not the only reason. And we actually had a great time in Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. It was um, amazing. I did obviously check out some coffee shops. Mm-hmm. They were very nice. You walked inside and you could sit down at the table and order a joint or you could order some flour and you could smoke it out of your own tools or sometimes they had, you know, stuff that you could use. Um, Along with a coffee or a tea if you wanted or a soda. Um, But that's literally what it is. And I will have to say it was a really cool experience. I love being able to like smoke before lunch or, you know, after something that we just did or whatever and just chill out. But I I am spoiled in Oklahoma because we have some of the highest grade medical marijuana and it was not to par for what I'm used to in Oklahoma as far as, like, you know, the strength. Um, but, yeah, I still prefer Oklahoma marijuana, I have to say, but it was really cool, and we need to get some Oklahoma coffee shops going soon. That would be awesome. So that needs to be a thing. Come on, whoever needs to write those things up for us. So also while in Amsterdam... Probably one of the most well-known things that people think of, um, besides maybe the marijuana, I don't know, um, is the red light district. So, of course, me being me, I want to go see um, the red light district. And what 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 is what is here at the red light district in 2024? So, 
we went, we ventured, we ventured to the red light district. Mm -hmm. Um, and you start literally seeing like outlines of like windows and red lights, Mm -hmm. but we were there early. So it was like five, 6 PM. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't very late. Not a lot happening at five, 6 PM yet. Um, and then all of a sudden you turn the corner and it's just like sex shop, sex shop, sex shop, tons of sex shops. Um, oh, you have the picture too of us sitting in the, in the door. It said, um, take a picture in our dick chair. And I was like, dildo chair, dildo chair. I'm sorry. In our dildo chair. So of course we had to go into that sex shop. And of course I wanted to take a picture inside of the dildo chair. And it was really like a giant chair, just like wrapped in dildos. And they had like penis pillows. I wanted to buy one, but you were like, no. So we didn't buy a penis pillow. I was pillow. joking. If you had <laughs> wanted it, we could have got it. It's a rainbow penis pillow that I'll have to find online not, somewhere. I'll tell you, that, be honest, I think I told you that was not what I thought it was going to be either. Yeah, I no, honestly thought it might have been a little a more risque. It was a very innocent dildo yeah. dick chair um, that we both took photos in, so we'll post those as yep. well. And we have the QR code for the shop, so if anybody yeah. is interested, they'll be able to go yeah. right, take their own picture in a dildo yes. chair. Yes, and... Um, we bought a little something, something there too, but we aren't sharing that in the podcast. So yeah, they had lots of cool stuff. It got a memory from the red light district yep. sex shop. And then we went to go find the women in the windows because I had to, yeah. I was curious, you know, I was like, what, what's the deal here? I've been, I've been to strip clubs. Like, I don't know. So we turn another corner and sure enough, there they are. And there was like three of them. And they're they're in their like their swimsuits, their underwear. They're not fully nude. I don't remember seeing anyone fully nude. Um, One or two of them were topless. Oh, okay. I don't remember that, I guess, specifically. But mm-hmm. yeah, so they're basically naked or almost naked. And they're literally just like in these little rooms with a red light around it. Mm-hmm. And at one point we were walking past and a man approached the girl and she opened the door for him. And he came inside and, you know, they're signing up to do whatever they got to do um, because it's completely legal. Like, it's totally legal to do all of this. Taxed, they're monitored, they have to show their medical cards, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, you know, Roxanne, you know, it's where the whole red light song comes from. So we got to see that. I did take a few detours so we could see a few more because, you know, I've never seen anything like this where people are just like putting themselves on display and... You know, as a woman, it's like, how do I feel about this? But I'm hopeful that they're doing it because they want to and because it is so regulated and it's not like they're just doing this under the table kind of thing. Um, But yeah, it was very interesting to see. I feel like if we would have been there later in the night, there would have been a lot more women in the windows. Well, Um, remember, too, they said they've been cutting back a little bit more, pushing them away from the cities, the centers. Yes. So. so they're fighting against it now, apparently. Um, so, yeah, we did get to see the red light district. Um, I would say if you've never been, check it out. I I, I mean, when in Rome, right? Yeah. I, <laughs> I, and you weren't the only one. I mean, I was paying attention. There was a ton of couples yeah. and the girls were all just like, oh, my God, look at this. Look at that. And yeah. I could see it was like, oh, wow, this is this is different. Yeah, it was interesting. So, yeah, yeah we got to we got to see the the women in the windows. Um, so yeah, we did that. Um, they are known for their tulips and their flowers and there were like a whole, I think it was like the flower market is what it was called. Literally rows and rows and rows of people selling flowers on flowers and bulbs and tulips and these little wooden tulips that you could buy, which we got some to take home with us. It was beautiful. And then there was like all kinds of really cool different shops. Um, we did a canal tour. That was cool. I mean, when you're in Amsterdam, you have to do that. That's what everyone tells you. Um, That was pretty neat. If I could make a recommendation to anybody that goes, though, um, is do the canal boat tour as soon as you get there. So you can get a better lay of everything around the city because we ended up walking back and forth a couple of different times, they're like, oh, where was that? Oh, that's right where we were. So we oh, had to walk Amsterdam all the way back. Amsterdam is what I thought was Vegas. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, Amsterdam I didn't was think it was Vegas, Cologne. Yeah. Not Cologne. So, yeah, it's like a giant, authentic, cool, old Vegas, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but the amount of, like, literally any street you turn down, shops, 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 like tons of places to go shopping. 
And it was all different kinds of places too. Um, some of them were like more like chain. Like there was lots of stores that were like American junk food, basically stores. Um, it's just like sugar filled snacks and all the energy drinks. There was one place we went in and there was probably like 50 monsters that they sold of all the different flavors. Yeah, it was the candy shops. Yeah. They import that stuff from America right. and they Cereals love it. And yeah. And tricks. Yeah. And all the sugary things. Yeah. Um, and then we found other cool spots that had like pape or they had different kinds of mushrooms um, and supplements and CBD. And like it was just literally like anything that you want. Mm -hmm. Amsterdam's got it. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And then we also went to this museum that I found on like some sponsored ad that popped up before I'm we got there. I'm so glad that popped up because I had never heard of it, honestly. And it's called Our House. Yep. And we obviously are both very much into electronic music. Yep. Um, and it was just the history of house music and how it's evolved into EDM music and every, you know, part of that type of music, which we both love. Um, so it was like you could play with the giant um, sequencer, the drum machines. Yes. Like it was, yeah, it was you super You could play cool. with stuff. You it, There was like a little thing where it was like practicing how to DJ, yeah. which was really silly when you actually know what's happening. But it was cool. Um, they had posters and different like knickknacks from all different festivals from all over the world. Both of Daft Punk's helmets, Dead Mouse, one of Dead Mouse heads, and marshmallows. marshmallows. Yeah. yeah, there was just all kinds of like EDM memories and relics, and mm -hmm. um, they did a whole video of like the history, and that was really cool of like house music where it started and how it's evolved into everything that we have now. Um, so I actually learned quite a bit too because I I know some, and I actually didn't realize that um, dubstep didn't start until what two thousand. What is it, like 2002 or something? I didn't realize that. So that's pretty cool. So I'm like pretty OG dubstep fan. I'm just saying. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then at the end, they did this thing where you're on the stage and it's literally like you're at a music festival and there's like lasers and lights and mu music and a de it was it was super cool. So we love that. The very beginning when they did the time warp, like from the beginning, the 70s, all the way through to now. That's where I like got a little teary eyed because it was like it was emotional for me because, you know, having been this year is 24 years of me being in this industry now as a DJ and it was going so far back. And it was like, wow, like I just certain songs and certain visuals of the DJs and stuff just took me back. Like, oh, man, that song in 99, that's when I was at the Love Parade in Berlin or 98. I was over here or 2002. You know, like it was just it was crazy to think. And then when they got to that middle part was where I really almost lost it. They started and they didn't talk about it. It was a memorial, but it, it was because it was it was four major names, you know, in a row that they talked about that are no longer with us. And, you know, all of them having battled depression and mental issues is ultimately why they took their own lives. Like it hit me in that moment. But it's. I never had heard of that. And, you know, it's crazy. And then when you posted it, a couple of people like, oh, our house, that's amazing. And like, blah, 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 I've always wanted to see him. Like, I didn't even know this existed. You know what I mean? So it was a really cool spot. Yeah, it was awesome. And I want to say the tickets for both of us was like 40 ish bucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, but super cool. And they have like a little um, space afterwards. You can go shopping and they've got cool little knickknacks there too. So that was a really cool spot. Um, I can't forget. I can't believe you're forgetting Prior to all that, though, what happened? What? We were on our way up there, and they're like, I want to go to the beach. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When there's a beach nearby, my spotty senses go off, yeah. um, and I find it. Yep. I'm a Scorpio, and I am through and through water all the way, baby. Um, so, yeah, I was, like, looking as he was – we were headed to Amsterdam, and I was, like, looking at the map while he was driving. I was like, hmm, the ocean. And then it was um, – what ocean is it? I'm blanking right now. Oh the my. North Sea. The North Sea. Oh, God. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> okay, so if anyone's on TikTok, you know what I'm talking about. So the North Sea videos, they're all over. And it's that. So it's like... And he was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, so I just showed no him the clue. video. And it's just like endless videos of how scary that ocean or the sea is. So we went there. And honestly... 
It was chill. It was a great, great spot. You could put your feet in the water. I mean, obviously, we're not in like the depths of the ocean there. We're on the coast. Um, but yeah, we went, we went like a maybe a 45 minute detour before and we stopped at the beach. And the town we drove through was super cute. Oh, that's another thing. Literally everyone rides bikes in Amsterdam or Everybody. the Netherlands. Everyone. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Like it's 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 crazy how many bikes are everywhere. Um, people I feel like they feel like very active there. I feel like everyone's like moving around and doing stuff. And again, we got lucky with the weather because I mean it was bright and sunny outside. Which I wanna I wanna stop that right there with the the myth that we have here in America that like potheads and stuff are lazy. Not only does everybody there ride bikes, but pretty much everybody there partakes too in marijuana and they ride bikes everywhere and they go to the coffee shop. I don't know the statistics shop. on how many people actually, because like I said, that's also like a touristy thing. Um, but also newsflash, Germany is getting weed legalized very soon. So there's Next that. month. Yeah. So that's cool. Okay. Sorry. Back. And Amsterdam. We had an awesome hotel um, for two yeah. nights there. It was called something. I don't remember. Um, we'll post about that later. But it was really nice. We walked in and I was like, do we belong here? This place is fancy. <laughs> yeah, both of us said that. Yeah. And um, no, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. But we were there. Yep. Um, I will say the room was very small, um, which a lot of the rooms were small. But this one was particularly interesting because the the toilet room, which was a box, um, was hard for me as a five foot four person to, you know, use the toilet. It was small. Um, so yeah, Brian had a fun time being almost six, six, two. six, two man that he is. Um, so that was a whole experience, but, um, yeah, that hotel a plus love that one. And it, the location was prime. Like we were right in the mix. Um, phase two of the parking situation. Uh, that was interesting trying to find it. It ended up being yeah. part of the hotel, but we just had to figure out where it was. Yeah. They also had a, an elevator for your car if the spots were taken, which I wanted to use, but we I never didn't. got to. No. <laughs> we um, never moved our car. We, no, we didn't drove there and stayed. So Amsterdam was super cool. Love Loved it. it. Would absolutely go back. Me too. Um, and then we head to the next spot. Yep. Okay, cool. So then we went to the Black Forest region, um, which is where my family allegedly is originated from. I gotta I gotta do some, you know, checks there myself. But we went to Baden Baden, um, which is a really like world renowned, famous spa city. Mm -hmm. um, kind of gave me like Eureka Springs vibes, um, I would say. Um, but everything was really nice. Our hotel there was A plus as well. Um, it was literally like a whole condo. Um, so we had a kitchen and a living room, and then we had our bedroom. We had two balconies that yeah, looked out on like one of the historic spas. Yep. Um, so that was an A plus spot. Would definitely recommend that going was your there find. again. Yeah, I found you that found one. You found that one. Yeah, that was my spot. Um, so that was super cool. And then we literally just like hopped around town again, and um, I got a cute little ring. I got two two cute little rings while in Germany, actually. And, um, both, both stones that I, precious stones that I, I love and yeah, Baden Baden. What else we do in Baden Baden? Well, that's where we went to the German restaurant there too. And finally got like a, a feast. Oh yes, yes, yes. You kept looking at me and I just kept ordering everything. I'm like, yeah. I want you to be able to try whatever you want. The lady literally was like, all of that? Oh um, no, and he's I was like, like, yeah. Don't judge me. Just we got like we just I got a beer soup, but honestly, I think that was my favorite thing of the whole trip. It was really? so good. It was like a French, French dip soup, French onion soup. I don't know. It was yummy. Mm -hmm. But we ate a lot of food and it was super good. Um Again, non-alcoholic beer. I think I had a tea. They love tea there, which I also love tea. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, but short time there, but really good time. Yeah, we got in there late that night because remember that was like what a five and a half, six hour drive. Yeah, from that was our longer, Amsterdam. our longer haul. Um, so we just bumbled around, and then the next day the weather was a little bit better for us. Thank God. So that we could go actually into the Black Forest to the waterfall that you wanted yes. to see. Yes. Yeah, we ended up. Finding a little trail because I again when there's a forest we're going in, um, so we went to this little trail and we hiked down it and it was probably only a total like there and back maybe a mile and a half two miles yeah it wasn't long not long um, but super accessible for pretty much everybody 
Um, and then it takes you down to a waterfall. So that was really, really cool. Um, we got to see some furry cows is what I call them. Um, but they're like Highland. Highland cattle, I think is what they Scotland call them. Scotland or yeah. something like that. But they're like the furry, super cute ass cows. So we got to see some of those up close. That was really neat. Um, but yeah, that was a nice little adventure. I love going on hikes into the mm. forest. So that was really cool. And then we... Went back to Munich. No. We went to the big castle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was on the way to Munich. I forgot about that. Yeah. 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 So on the way to Munich, I was like, well, uh, the princess castle, though, is pretty close. So, oh, of course, we make another see detour. The princess castle. This is what happens when you road trip with Samantha. We go on detours. Yep. Um, so we, we end up going to the castle that um, is... Walt Disney used it to model the castles, Cinderella. the Cinderella yeah. castle off of. It's called Neuschwanstein. And it's, it's like the castle yep. that everyone knows about that you see when you're in Germany. So we, we stopped over there. Um, it did start snowing, which I low-key was super excited um, I love snow. Yeah. And it was like snow and pretty and white. And it was like literally green. And then it was just like white snow everywhere. Um, it was beautiful. Because we went up in the mountains. Yeah. We were right on the German Alps. Yeah, we were very close to Switzerland at that point. Um, but we accidentally drove into Austria on our way. Literally mm -hmm. was on our on our way. We didn't go the wrong way. We just go through Austria to mm -hmm. get to places in Germany because that's how small countries are there. It's nuts. And why that was a big deal was, well, Austria is not super small, but it like intertwines. Well, how close they yeah. are. But why I got worried is because parts, uh, parts of Austria, you have to get a sticker and you have to pay for it to drive on the roads. And if you don't get that before you get on the certain roads, it's like 15, 20 times more expensive than what the sticker would have been. So I was like, oh, crap. I hope we don't get like stopped and checked on this. But, but they don't we were, care. We were, what, two minutes in Austria they didn't and care. right back into Germany? Crossing borders is not what I expected. I do have to say that. Like, I thought it was going to be like a, a stop and search your vehicle, which we had all of our luggage with us. So I was like, we have a lot of shit with us. Mm -hmm. um, no, you literally just drive like you were driving to, you know, Norman from well, Oklahoma City. EU, so. Yeah. If you start going to some of the Eastern Bloc countries and stuff like that, they will they may very well stop you at the border. But not us. Nope. So yeah, we went to the castle. It was definitely super cloud. We got there late. So we checked into a hotel. It was a dope hotel as well. Love the hotel. Yep. It was like a it reminded me like a ski lodge. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was super cool. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. They had a sure. the, the bedroom and then there was a room for the toilet and the sink. And then there was a room for a shower, a bath, which I said at the beginning of the trip, I want to manifest a bath. And we did. And that was a very last minute booking. Mm -hmm. um, so I did take a bath, which if anyone knows, that's like super hard for me. I've probably not taken a bath in like three years. I'm weird I've about never relaxing. Seen you take one. Yeah, never. So I took a bath. I did it. Um, and then the next morning we woke up and we went up to the castle. Um, it's a horse drawn carriage that takes you up. Um, because the buses were not working because there was snow on the ground, mm -hmm. which the horses were like four euros a person. It was cheap. It was. Yeah, it was pretty cheap. And then it was cool. We got to talk to some friends on the way up who were also from America. And then we got to the top and it was hard to see a lot, I will say, because there was lots of clouds from the yeah. snow and things like that. But still super cool. I got to see it. Got to get to the top. And then we just. We just walked to the bottom and enjoyed our time. And there's another castle across the ways. We took photos of that. Castles just galore in Germany. It's nuts. Um, and then we shopped around the town a little bit. And then that very much. Yeah, it's a small little We just headed shops. on out to Munich. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Munich was our last stop, which is also where we were flying home from. So that mm -hmm. worked out that way. Um, but we spent actually a few more days than expected in Munich because there was an air um, line strike by Lufthansa. Yeah, Lufthansa. those guys. Lufthansa is the, the biggest and best airline out of Germany, and they partner with United. So all their ground people is who United uses at the terminals and for the luggage and all this, all that stuff. So they went on strike, and uh, we ended up staying longer than we expected. Yeah, we did, but it's cool. Yeah. So we got to, you know, do Munich things in another big city, so we got to explore and see the things that they've got there and did a lot of walking and I was pretty happy. My ankle held up pretty good for the most part. Um, yeah, I we went to BMW world. Of course, Brian loves BMW. He's had a few, I would say. 
Um, but they had some really cool, like, old ones, and then at the museum, and they could see just, like, the history of BMW, and they had all kinds of cool cars on display. So that was fun. Um, I feel like we did something else. The outdoor market that you saw online that you really wanted yeah. to see in downtown Munich. Yeah, the outdoor market was super cool. It literally was like a giant farmer's market. That's just there all the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like oogling over like the 60 variety of olives this one man was selling. Mm -hmm. And then he had picked, another guy had a bunch of pickles and I had the best pickle and of guys, my she's life. She's not over exaggerating. I can't. These stands have literally like 60 different types of variants of pickles and, and stuff. Just whatever you want pickles, flowers, olives, bread, yeah. meat, cheese, everything. And I was just like, oh, I wish we lived here. I can just go shopping here every day. Screw Walmart. Uh, but yeah, had the best pickle of my life. I don't know how I'm going to go back. I ate pickles like from here and I, they don't taste good anymore. I'm really just upset about it. So I'm going to figure out how to import some of those pickles. Um, I literally was eating the pickle and someone, a couple next to me was like looking around and we're in Germany, but I was like, my mind was just like, they just, not, they speak English and they did. Um, but I was like, if you guys like pickles. You should get one of these pickles. And they ate two of them. I was so proud. I saw him walking around with two pickles. It was the most pickles. random thing. Like, you just, yeah. like, just you're chomping on your pickle and looked at him like, these pickles are the best. They you were should so get good. One. I was like, I need to be a pickle saleswoman. <laughs> anyway, that pickle is fire. Um, so, yeah, Munich was super cool. Um, okay, so that's those are all the places we went. So I just want to make sure. Oh, we talked about water and how expensive it is. Mm -hmm. So don't expect to get free water Look, when, in Germany. When she says how expensive it is, it's we're not talking not like free. twenty dollars. No, anything. it was like yeah. four to seven euros. Uh, yes, okay, it was. Um, but it's cool, you know. Whatever, just just get the non-alcoholic beer because it's Who cheaper. Who goes on vacation and drinks water? I like water. Drink I get beer, thirsty. Drink drinks. Drink. Try different things. Anyway, water is not free. Um, we did say alcohol free, so that was really cool. Um, the gas prices were astronomical. We will say that. I, yeah, and it was, that was a culture shock to me because when I lived over there, I worked on the army basis. So I got gas coupons that I could use at certain gas stations. Um, so I got gas at the American price. This is the first time I ever had to pay German price. And like when we filled up that first time, it was like 105, 110 euros. I was like, holy crap, 125 dollars. 130, something like that, US yeah. dollars. And it, it was, was crazy. And it was only a small Nissan SUV crossover. This wasn't like huge tank. It was Yeah, but, gas yeah. was crazy. So there was definitely that. Um, bathrooms, I've always heard about the bathrooms in Europe and like how you have to pay for them. That is most almost always accurate, um, unless obviously like you're in your hotel or something. Um, but it was like a euro. It wasn't like anything crazy. Which you can then turn. They give you the coupon. You can go at the gas station, use that yeah. coupon to get money back on whatever you buy at the. They also have gas station like stops way more often on the highway. Um, we were driving on the Autobahn for a whole lot of it. So that was another thing that you can literally go as fast as you want. And I, you know, in my head, I'm like, that's cool. And it actually worked out really well. Like, I think we only saw maybe like two accidents the whole time we were driving. And we literally drove all over Germany. Um, and I mean, I think the fastest you went was probably like 180 kilometers. An yeah. Hour. So like 110 ish. Mm, miles probably per a little bit higher than that. Maybe 110, 120. So, I mean, we were going fast, but there were people going way faster than us. Um, and the Autobahn is it's a highway like it's it's a normal highway with four ish lanes on it. But it's um, perfect. I was going to say, no the puddles. roads are perfect. Everything's marked. They have signs for everything. Like, it was A+. Plus. Um, another thing for the ladies that I wanted to point out that I noticed in every single bathroom, no matter where we were, every single one, um, they have, I don't even know what they're called, but like tampon bags to dispose your tampons in and then the trash can. So like, obviously, flushing tampons is a not great thing for any toilet. Um, but it's like, what the frick do you do with the tampon? So in Germany, every single bathroom had a, a little thing where you could grab a bag and toss your tampon and, and throw it away. I thought that was awesome. So I super appreciate that, Germany. Thank you for that. Thank you for looking out for your ladies. We appreciate you. Um, food costs were really good. I feel like um, for the amount of food that you got, the prices were not very, very much. Um, yeah. I think that's, those are all the points that we really wanted to hit. So mm -hmm. it was a great trip. I loved it. It was a really good trip.
favorite thing? Um, people that keep asking me this. I I think it was probably the day that we hung out with um, Renee and his family, like that whole Fairtime basically experience. So that was probably my favorite. Yeah, for me, it was. It's a toss up between that day and the day we went to our house and got the painting from the guy on the street oh, yeah. in Amsterdam. Um, both of those days are really, really great for me and stuff too. So it was great seeing you mesh well with Renee and Melly and Liam and stuff. So it's like, it was great. Yeah, it was a great trip. So we definitely won't be waiting 14 more years to go to Germany. Hell no. Uh, we're hoping to make it happen like every other year. Um, so that's the plan, you know. July is open. For yeah, I know, exactly. But happen. at least every other year. Um, and then having, you know, our friends from Germany come visit us here would be really cool, too. Um, but, yeah, that was my first time, like, flying besides to Mexico. I've been to, like, the Bahamas, Mexico, all the places that kind of border the U.S. Um, but this is my first time going, you know, in a plane for 10 hours. Um, so I will definitely do it again. I did not die. Just make sure you got snacks. That's my number one thing oh. I forgot. Bring your snacks and your water bottle um, and a blanket and a comfy pillow. They'll give you headphones. Um, but yeah, all in all, A plus vacation. And for anybody who's listening and like, man, it's so expensive. It's not. If you budget it correctly and you're open, you can go there. If, I say inexpensive, but it's in doable. De- exactly. Like if yeah. you like. If we book our our tickets now again for next year, you know, we you got a whole year. You could go over there per person for a couple thousand bucks. Yeah. We did a lot of stuff and we didn't not do things we wanted to do and we didn't go crazy. So no. but that is it for today. Mm-hmm. That is our Germany experience. So we wanted to definitely talk about that and document that here on episode 14. Crazy. 14 already. Huh? 14. And Brian will be getting in on this podcasting here soon himself. Yep. Um, he'll be joining in on Saturday here at Possibilities in Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. So he can learn about podcasting and start his own. Yeah. Still narrowing down the full concept and what the name will be, but uh, more to come on that. Me too. Still know what I'm doing here, but I'm here. Hey, there we go. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming on today and talking about our trip. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Goddess Awakening. Check out our link tree in the description for all our socials and upcoming events. This podcast is brought to you by the Possibilities Podcast Platform. 